get a chicken and cheeseburger and just regular fries. Yep, anything else? No, that's it. Alright, so some as you may know, I've had this car for about three years now. And um, I'd say for almost half that time, it's been my daily. I thought it'd be cool to talk about how an S15 is as a daily, and I guess it applies for most kind of 90s era um, JDM cars. In case some of you are looking to buy one and it's gonna have to be your only car. And then we'll talk a bit about why I wanted to, well actually had to get a daily. Um, and yeah, so we might as well start with the good things. And to be completely honest, this car is so comfortable. Even with how low it is, the suspension's soft and I could drive this thing every day, absolutely no problem. Of course, it depends on your situation. I don't have kids I need to have in the back seat, uh, which the back seats are essentially unusable, just so you know. It's really a two person car, comfortably. It's also worth saying that the boot's not amazing on this. I have fit two wheels in here before. You could fit one suitcase, but personally my dad has a ute. So if I need something moved, I'll typically borrow that. If you think you're gonna be needing to move a fair amount of stuff, go to the shops, pick up furniture. Um, I think that's pretty obvious, but this is definitely not the car for you if this is gonna be your only car. So basically, if you don't need to carry multiple passengers around and like often need to move, big objects. This car is perfectly fine and it's seriously super comfortable so I would not worry about that at all if that's one of your concerns. So if those things don't concern you, this is why I personally got a daily and why you may not want to drive an S15 every day. Now, if it isn't obvious, um, this car is heavily modified and that is honestly where the issues can start coming in to daily it. So brief story time, if you haven't followed my channel before, um, you wouldn't know that this car's undergone a full engine rebuild. Um, and that was because it actually blew up. At about 180,000 kilometers, it started rod knocking. And there was only very light modifications. It did have an aftermarket turbo um, injectors, and it was making about 210 kilowatt to the wheels which is not crazy, but sometimes there's just no avoiding uh, things like that with these old Japanese cars, and you'll eventually probably have to put a lot of money and time into them to get them running again. So if you're thinking of going all in on an S15, um, spending all your money, I'd probably recommend not to because things go wrong with these and you're gonna need spare cash. And that leads on to why um, I essentially got a daily because this thing was out for about six months, undrivable, and of course I need to get around, so there's no real way around it other than owning two cars. Now, other than things going wrong with the car, like usually you can get them finished um, quick, other than the engine, I guess, which completely stops the car from working. I bring it down to two main reasons for why I prefer to not drive this every day. And I guess both of the reasons kind of fall under the category of anxiety or they both give me anxiety at least now the first one it may not be a problem where you live but i have heard it's getting a lot stricter around the world and that is police of course it's not going to be a problem if you're driving a stock s15 around but i think the majority of people like to modify their car and in australia where i live Unfortunately, a lot of these modifications bend the rules a little bit and you can get in trouble pretty easily. Fortunately, I've been really lucky and had literally no issues, which kind of gives me a bit too much confidence, um, more than I should have for driving this around all the time. Depending on where you live, it may be an issue, but that really applies for all modified cars, so not S15s in particular, but I'm just assuming if you want an S15, you're gonna wanna do some things to it to make it cool because in my opinion at least they're not very cool stock and as soon as you do a few things like wheels suspension give it a bit more power it turns into a really cool car the second thing that gives me anxiety which is essentially the main reason um, is due to my ride height now driving where you know is always easy you know there's a pothole there 
I'll go around this way to avoid these speed bumps, but the 10% of driving you do where you're not sure what the car park's gonna be like, if you're even gonna be able to enter the place with your car being this low, and you might be on your way somewhere really important, and just driving a low car like this can impact your journey. You know, you might not be able to go where you wanna go, not to mention that you could be pulled over delayed i don't know i guess it's just a bit of stress um added to your everyday life which some people might not care at all but personally i prefer to not deal with it every day and so i've actually thought of a third super obvious reason um that gives you anxiety so one police two drivability three is the value of the car and unfortunately um how common it is to have one of these stolen. Depending on where you park, if you're in really busy places or just a really quiet car park, there's always the chance that someone's gonna try and steal your car. It's kind of a bad combination with these being worth a good amount and being old and therefore kind of easier to take, I guess, than a modern car. You definitely do hear stories of these things getting taken, put in a shipping container and you just never see it again. Of course, with the value, the car harder to insure than a modern car so yeah that's just another reason why you kind of not want to drive it every day just leave it home safe in the garage which does kind of suck because i'm an advocate for driving your car and enjoying it a lot but um it's definitely just something to think about if especially if you're thinking of putting a lot of money into a car um yeah a risk now something else that applies to me but won't necessarily apply to you is fuel consumption uh, with this built motor so when this was near stock um, on 98 it got about 12 liters per hundred which isn't amazing but it's actually like not that bad now if you have a look in there you'll see an ethanol content sensor so this car is running on e85 now and that is a flex fuel sensor so I can put 98 in it, but it will make a lot less power. And in the, it's been over a year now since I had this thing tuned, and I have not put a drop of E of, of 98 in it. Sorry, because when I'm driving this thing, I don't know. I just want to enjoy it more. E85 is a safer fuel, and although it burns a lot quicker and ends up costing a lot more to run, I prefer to keep the engine safe and enjoy the more power it gives me. So yeah, that may or may not apply to you, but that's a big reason um, of why I don't want to drive this thing every day because it's going to cost me an absolute fortune in petrol. Drivability, I am really happy with how it's set up at the moment for how low it is. Like, I can get into most places. there do come times where you just got to send it and you wreck something as you can see this bump is cracked and it's actually just being held on by a zip tie right now because the mount got completely pulled out but that stuff happens and it's actually getting fixed soon but yeah if you want to run a low car you got to be prepared to pay some money to fix it up or just leave it clapped like a lot of people do so yeah, i hope this answers some questions for you guys if you have any more just comment down below um, and I'll answer. But yeah, it's pretty funny. When I was thinking of getting this car, the list of negatives was just massive, like cost, things that can go wrong, this, that, everything I've mentioned. Um, and the plus sides were just, looks cool, feels cool, fun. But it's been three years, I've had many problems, spent heaps of money on it, and I definitely don't regret it at all so yeah as always guys thank you for watching new lens by the way um a lot wider so i think i'll get a lot more interesting shots with this um i think it should take the youtube videos to the next level so let me know what you thought of that stay tuned for the next one should be in only a week i've got some stuff on the way from japan so that will be fun anyways like subscribe comment go buy an s15 see you later